Chances are you've been sharpening your pencil wrong your entire life for drawing. I like to think of the pencil as a way to training to be a better painter. So we want our pencil to be more brush-like. When we're first starting school, we're given those uh, yellow pencils. They're like a hexagonal shape and they come sharpened with this point. Well, the pencils that we use, be it Conte or Wolf's Carbon or Charcoal, we want to get a very long taper blending into the shoulder. So it's going to look more like a missile or a needle. So somewhere down there is the shoulder. Having a long taper allows us to use different parts of the pencil and as we're drawing to be turning the pencil and then that way it's going to stay sharper longer so you don't get uh, a dull tip which makes for fatter lines. But also the architecture of this type of pencil sharpening allows us to make different types of marks used for different things. The very very sharpest point or the tip we can use for hard edge things and detail work eyelashes, things like that. Here is what I would call firm. And this big side we can use for gradations and soft edges. Some of what you'll need in order to get started. Some pencils. I've got the Pier Noir 1710B here. I've got some Wolf's Carbon, my preference is 4B and 6B, and also General's Pencils, which you can get in any uh, type of variety. You will need some sort of blade to do your sharpening. And these blades I get at Home Depot, and you can also get them uh, in a scraper like this. And of course, everyone at home has something, an X-Acto blade, although that's not my preference. You'll need a little bit of Kleenex for wiping up the excess lead, and also um, a Ziploc bag with some sandpaper in it. And I like above 100 and my preference is 220, very fine. That's all you need to get going. I'm gonna get started. Um, the blades come like this with some cardboard protecting them. I'm just going to take that off. I might save it and restore it back in there so that the blade is not uh, rolling around my pencil case or when I'm reaching in cutting me up. I like to store my blades inside with my uh, kneadable eraser or actually just placing it in the kneadable eraser. This is my goal here, that long taper I talked about. I'm going to take the blade in my right hand and this hand is the hand that's just going to control the angle this way and this way along the pencil side. I'm gonna hold the pencil in my left hand. And now if you're a self paw just reverse the order of what's going on here. But it's this left hand that's going to call the pencil towards me with these fingers and press with the thumb. And the thumb is pressing up against the back, the thicker part of that metal there. So it looks something like this. I, and I want to start back at least, you know, a thumb length on this pencil. Give myself a nice long shoulder. So just press with the thumb. And you don't want to press super duper hard. The harder you press, the more violent you are, the more chances you have of breaking. And these pencils aren't cheap. So we want to make sure to get the most out of it. This is also a good time to relax and sort of meditate. Your goal is to not touch the drawing material or the lead here. You'll see, uh, you'll see that there will be a bit of glue that separates the wood from the material that you can just kind of shave off. There. Just going Gently. to attempt to get the glue off. I'm not really shaving off um, like I was pressing with the thumb earlier. I just want to get the glue off in between. So I'm just lightly going back and forth here just to clean it up a little bit. I've got this nice long piece and this nice long shoulder. Some will actually take the pencil and the blade vertically over the garbage and use it to shape the tip. So now I'm gonna take my 
bagged up sandpaper. And I'm going to be rotating while I do this inside the bag. You don't want to press too hard because you will break the tip. What you're trying to do is to slowly get the shoulder tapered here. So you'll, you'll get the feel for it. It takes a little bit of practice. Once you have your taper to the desired shape, you'll see that there's a lot of excess material on here that gets it dirty. Uh, good piece of advice, just get a piece of Kleenex and wipe it off. You see how much material. You don't want that winding up on your drawing by accident. So just wipe it clean. Make any fixes. Look for any uh, nicks or anything inside the pencil. Then you're ready to go on to your next one. Now I'm gonna do a Wolf's Carbon. Uh, I prefer the 4B personally. I find the 2B a little too hard for the paper I'm using. And I'll use the 6B for darker shading because it's a much uh, softer lead. Now with this pencil, because the diameter is a lot smaller, I'm gonna want to start my shoulder off a little bit shorter. I don't want it to be quite as long. So just press with that thumb and call back with the finger of the left hand and the right hand just stays steady. You'll also feel differences in the hardness of wood or sometimes there's like little knots or imperfections. So you don't want to jab too hard down. You want to keep your angle fairly shallow. Not something like this because you'll dig into the material. So now I'm going to go a little bit further back and rise to the front. The first sharpen always takes the longest and once you have the shape defined, it's a lot easier in subsequent sharpenings just to follow the line that you've already created and bring it back a little bit. So being very careful not to gouge my material here. You can see I'm even leaving just a little bit of glue in there. You do not want to cut your drawing material. You only want to cut the wood away from it. And there's a, just an ultra thin bit of glue in between there. And so you really have to practice and get a feel for this. And you will break some pencils along the way, but just breathe deeply, listen to your favorite music, sing, whatever it takes to get these pencils sharpened. Maybe don't do them after your first coffee because your hands might be shaking a little bit. But this will help you be calm and focused for the activity of drawing that you're about to partake in. So, it's part of our practice as professional artists is getting this area, get our tools right, get our mind right, get this area of our lives handled. So because the diameter is not as thick, I'm not going to make it as long as the Conte. So when I'm sharpening, uh, anytime I'm done a pencil and I put on the tab or something beside it, I always put it um, beside something like an eraser so that it can't roll off the table. Now we just do our handy dandy sandpapering. I'm not pressing really hard this way. I just kind of let the weight of the pencil and a little bit of pressure and the whole while I'm, I'm turning and twisting my hand. Turning, turning, turning like this while I'm sanding side to side. Some people also find a back and forth movement while they turn helps them uh, hone it a lot better. Just be patient and you'll get your tools just the way you like. All right. so. Got the way I like. Clean off the excess material. Look at your handiwork. Very nice. More to go. And you'll also see in the bag that you're in the bag you're able to collect the material that you can use later. Now you've learned how we properly sharpen our pencil here at Atelier Artista. You've got a bunch ready, just in case you break one along the way. Now let's learn how to use it. Keep sharp and get drawing.